I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited and glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, these words are the words of life. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. Now, that's not because the person standing and speaking it is Jesus. It is because Jesus yields himself to the Holy Spirit that brings words to him for him to communicate. So what makes the words life is the spirit by which he is speaking. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm speaking to you today by that same spirit. So I can boldly tell you this, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It will bring life into your being. Praise God. And that's the truth. You have the same authority to speak such words into your day, into your environment, into your family. And you can boldly say the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Why? Because you yield yourself to the same spirit by which Jesus spoke. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? Join me in faith as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Woo, glory. Now, yesterday I was talking to you about prayer. Mm. Mm. Who couldn't have finished it? Some vital things we need to understand. So I was explaining to you about you know, what God, what the Lord was talking to me about, pray for our nation. I said, if we genuinely pray for our nation, Huh. You know, he said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves. First thing he said is humble themselves and pray. He says, if they will turn from their wicked ways. Let me read it. Let me read it to you. Second Chronicles. So we'll take it verbatim. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. It said, If my people who are called by my name identity so he's not talking about everybody here he's talking about those who have come to the place of understanding and identity and they are called by his name so if my people who are called by my name will first and foremost humble themselves see that now humble themselves how do you humble yourself casting all your cares away the humility is casting because what makes you um, proud is the cares that you carry. When you see people proud, it's because they carry so much care. Oh, they, they are concerned about how people perceive them. They are concerned about how, what people think about them. That's what breeds pride. So a humble man is a man who first of all have learned how to cast his care care away. You understand what I'm saying? Now, he says, so if they will humble themselves, so cast the care away. Sometimes you want to pray and then you, you, you're about to kneel down and pray like, will God hear me? What if God doesn't hear me? But in case, okay, if, even if he wants to hear me, how would he answer me now? What, what? Now, all those things are cares. You are not humble. You end up kneeling down and spending them all the time thinking without praying. Have you been there? You want to pray about something and then you start bothering yourself and wondering and, and, and thinking thoughts and then you're just there. Mm. Oh. If God will just do this thing for me, I'll be so happy. But man, how will he even do it? Time has even gone. This one has, this is it, this is it, this is this. You are kneeling down. You're supposed to be praying. And then next thing I, you know what? If God wants to do it, he'll do it. If he doesn't want to do it, there's no amount of prayer I'll pray that will be there. And then you get up from that prayer posture and walk away. You wasted your time. Praise God. Now, so he says, humble themselves and pray. Not think. Not discuss. Pray. And seek my face. 
It is the humility that will make you seek his face. Then he says, and turn from their wicked ways. Now, when you see wicked ways, you think he's talking about bad people. No, what he's referring to as wicked ways are those thoughts that you have figured out in your mind that it is the best way for God to answer your prayer. You know, for example, you pray, oh God, deal with my enemies. They, they are troubling me so much. Oh Father, arise, fight them, scatter them. And in your imagination, you are seeing God just yanking them off and, 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 and in fact, ripping their legs apart, apart from their body and just dealing with them. And then, yes, next time you don't try a child of God. Now, now those thoughts, those thoughts in themselves, they are wicked thoughts. So you're praying as, oh, Father, arise. Oh, God, arise. Those things are the things you're thinking about. And guess what? That will become an hindrance from you receiving answered prayers. Why? Because you are not walking in the light as he is walking in the light. See that now? So it says, turn from their wicked ways. So all those thoughts you're carrying in your mind, drop it. Drop it. It says, turn from their wicked ways ways say then i will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land i will hear from heaven then i will forgive their sins because the reason you're not seeing results before is because of your sins now what do you mean sin he's not just talking about oh the, the liar he he's talking about all those thoughts that we carry in our mind that have prevented god from acting where we are concerned that is preventing God from doing his will where we are concerned. What stops God from doing his will is the things that we carry in our mind. Now that is, those things we carry in our mind is what produces iniquity. It's the iniquity in us that produces physical sin. That's what makes people steal. That's what makes people do all, cheat others. That's what makes people murder others. That's what makes people do all the wrong things that we do. See that now? So he says, God is going to look at you because you've humbled yourself. You've prayed, you've sought his face and then you've forsaken your wicked ways. He says, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins. Then I'll bring healing to the land. Why will he bring healing to the land and forgive your sin? Because you're willing to repent. See that now that forsaking of your wicked ways is your act of repentance. So the same thing when we pray, you come before the Lord and the first thing you must do is to humble yourself. Now, whether you're praying for a corporate thing or you're praying for an individual stuff, you humble yourself before the Lord. You don't go before the Lord determining in your mind already how, what is suitable as an answer for you. Maybe you're having a problem at your job. Maybe you're having a problem at home with your spouse or with your children. Oh, Father, my children are not behaving right. What kind of children is this? Oh, God. Oh, God. Touch my children. Let them obey their parents. What if your instructions are not right? You don't know. You don't think about that. What if your instructions, what if the reason they are opposing your instructions is the fact that your instructions are not patterned according to their destiny? What if? See that now? So when you see that you're not getting the desired result, you know one scripture that keeps me going when it comes to human relationship is when he says, if a man's way pleases the Lord, oh dear Lord, I I remember years ago when, when this, this hit my spirit, I said, listen, I can never have any problem with anybody because nobody is my problem. He said, when a man's ways, hi, Gabashanda, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he, the Lord, will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. <laughs> Nobody's your problem. I can't stand here and say, I have a problem and it's Susan Superson. Nah. I know what to do. What do I do? I make sure that my way, where that thing is concerned, is pleasing to the Lord. I can't come and say, oh, my wife is my problem. See, because my wife, she does not listen to me. Oh, my wife, I, you know, anytime I tell her to do something, she'll do another thing. She'll always do what's on her mind. You know, blah, 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 blah. 
a man can be complaining. But a wise man will go before the Lord and say, Lord, I have noticed that the instructions I give to my wife, she doesn't keep them. And, and that's when the Lord will deal with you first. God is not going to deal with your wife like you think. You will think after praying that prayer, you will get back home and your wife will say, hey, Honey, you know what? I, I don't know, something just happened to me today and I feel I've not been a good wife to you. I want to change. You know, I want to start being a good wife to you. And they say, oh, yuppie, God have answered my prayer. No, that's not how it starts. It begins with you. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, it begins with you. Now you go before you say, Lord, my wife, I don't understand. And the Lord said, son, you have not been doing it right. Me? No. I do everything right. I provide for my family. I, 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 I make sure, oh, I've, not, I've never done anything against my wife. Self-righteousness. Yes. Then the Lord will say, son, you remember I told you this two years ago and you've not been keeping it. Hey, but that, that's not why my, it's not related. Ah, it's related. It's related. If you were doing this thing like I told you to do it, this is what would have happened that would have cost your wife to... Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Now, you didn't know that when he was giving you that instruction, he had all these things in view. You see, when Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you, because the instruction you will receive when you seek the kingdom of heaven is what is good is the string that is holding all those things together and as you hold that major line every one of these things will be pulled in your direction and they will be all be added to you so then the lord begins to deal with you and tell you you've not been given the appropriate instructions you've not been saying the right things you've not been doing it right like, lord i'm sorry lord now, you went before the Lord to get him to deal with someone else. But now he begins to deal, because that's what the Lord will do. You that came to him for prayer. I remember one time I was counseling with a lady. And then and, and she, she goes, eh, but, but is it only me you talk to? Why don't you tell my husband what he's supposed to do also? I said, hey, I'm talking to you now. I shouldn't be concerned about what your husband is supposed to be doing. I should be concerned about what you will do. Because we can't sit down here and I'll tell you what your husband is supposed to do. I think the problem is solved. No, we begin with you. You that thought it wise to come speak to me. You are the one I'm going to give the instruction on what you are supposed to do, not what your husband is supposed to do. So don't leave this place and be expecting what your husband is supposed to do. You go do what you are supposed to do. And when you do it and it's pleasing to the Lord, he will cause now if he's going to cause your enemies to be at peace with you how much more those who are not your enemies i mean he will just nudge them <laughs> they'll be at peace with you praise god yeah because your enemies he's gonna okay uh, uh, turn in this way turn out that way do this do this like oh okay 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 so now when the person is not your enemy just a nudging from them hey, hey you've not been treating this person right you see that now that's how it works. That's what prayer does. So when you go before the Lord in prayer, the first thing you do, cast out every care in your heart. Push it out. And come before the Lord. And, and just express clearly. Tell him what the situation. Don't come before the Lord and say, God, Lord, I want you to deal with my enemies. No, Lord, I have been having problems dealing with this person. And, and I feel I'm being cheated. I, I feel... This is not right. Lord, I need your help. I need your wisdom in dealing with this situation. That's why I've always said, when you go before the Lord to pray, the first thing, the first prayer point that must come out from your heart is, Lord, I need to know how to pray about this thing. See, that's what it means, seek my face. So now, Lord, I, I need to know how to handle this situation. I'm telling you, that's the secret of how I handle my marriage. Lord, I, I need to know what to do. And then the Lord tells you, why don't you do it like this? And I said, thank you, sir. I wasn't thinking of that before. I didn't know about that before. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Woohoo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then I go and do what he commands me to do. Because I have done it in faith, he 
taking that and counting that my action as righteousness goes into the situation and I am angry because when I pray to him I got him involved in that situation I got him involved so he gives me now when you pray you should be concerned about what you are hearing that's what you should be concerned about. Don't be concerned about when you're praying for Nigeria. Be concerned about what God is telling you. Don't be concerned about what God is thinking the president should do. You don't have access to the president to go and tell him this is what you should do. But you have access to yourself. You can obey God in whatever capacity and to do whatever he tells you to do. This is how we bring change into our lives into our society, into everything that we've got to do. This is how we bring change. And our time is up. Praise God. Now, I, I hope these things are, are, are bringing knowledge and understanding to you. I, I pray, Lord, by reason of these teachings, can you begin to instruct everyone that is listening to you? and develop this kind of relationship with them, Lord. And by that means, bring answer into their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.